the memories we can create now, that's what we were dreaming about when we were kids. All I wanted to do was play football. For the majority of my career, I've been playing and no one's even watched. You play in your village in a small club and one day you step out and you play in front of 70,000 people. I still can't believe it. I'm very aware of how lucky I am. Obviously, I wouldn't sit here today if I didn't think that uh, there's been progress. I've worked so hard, I finally got here. Why has this had to happen to me? The ACL injury in football is like a cancer in your life. Right now, the stress that I'm under and in terms of my body, it can be draining. We need pressure, we need expectations to move forward. We've got players that really stand up for more than just a great performance. They see us more as professionals. We are now role models for a lot of young girls. And it's growing, growing, growing. My mum had to pretend to be a boy to play football, I didn't. I'm a 100% winner. I hate losing. We always knew that we would get to this moment. We always believed it. It will be a travesty if nothing after this, if there's no legacy left. story I'm very aware of how lucky I am I've grown up in a, a really passionate football family I started playing football when I was six local boys team went on to play for Russian and Diamonds girls which uh, like a center of excellence so I've been really lucky to have been in the system so to speak the whole way through and yeah from nine age of nine signed for Arsenal and still there they can't get rid of me yeah we didn't want to make you blue <laughs> I was thinking, I, can't I don't do remember. It with one, one hand. Yeah. I'm Leah Williamson, I play for Arsenal in England. My personal journey with pressure, I used to, like I say, because I care so much and I have that, that investment in both the teams that I play for. It's, it can be draining if it's not done properly. And I think for a while, I used to think that if I was putting pressure on myself, that would bring out the best in me, but it's not sustainable in terms of adding extra to what is already there. Um, so yeah, I've, I've found a nice place now where I know it's expected of me and I want to deliver to those standards, which brings an element of pressure, but I've found my way to be comfortable. You know, everybody has the right thing to say when you're not in those shoes. So it's about trying to listen to that when you are and, Ultimately, if I'm going out on the pitch and I'm giving my best, there's not much more I can ask of myself in those moments. That's nice, I like that. It's, she looks super relaxed. Oh. I'm Alex Scott, former England and Arsenal footballer and now a TV broadcaster, TV presenter.
It depends who you talk to and what that word pressure is to them. For me, my favourite quote, which will always be, pressure is privilege, from Billie Jean King. You know, you work so hard, you train so hard to be in a certain environment, play in those big games. So then why would that pressure then all of a sudden be heavy and be a negative? It's what you've always wanted. So actually, in that moment, go out and enjoy it. It's about celebrating it, and now that we do have it, we can continue to push forward. We need pressure, we need expectations to move forward. I think it is really, really good that this is happening right now for women's football. This is what drives the professionalism we need, and uh, I think not everyone has the privilege of having pressure in life, so we're welcoming it very much. I look at you and I just take a seat. Hello, I'm Nadine Kessler. I'm the chief of women's football and responsible for women's football across Europe. Previously, I played a bit of football too, so a life dedicated to football is probably the right answer. We've invested a lot in women's football. We've rolled out so many projects a lot in the last years, changed so many things for the better. But in the end of the day, what people judge is a tournament like the Women's Zero. This is where you showcase where you want to go, what ambition you have for this sport. My name is Tessa Bollard. I am the captain of the national team of Belgium. I'm 29 years old. I never put pressure on myself. I just um, tell myself like, okay, you've prepared well and you're ready for it. And you have the ability or the qualities to have a good game or to make the difference. So um, why doubt yourself? During my experience in abroad too, um, I, I created that confidence to not let anyone tell me that I'm, that I'm not good enough or that I can't do anything. I'm just looking forward to the games and, and to, to the atmosphere and, and just enjoy it. And that's when I enjoy the game, I think that's where my best games are. Good evening, welcome to today's Matchday Minus One press conference with head coach Serena Wiegmann and Captain Neil Williamson. See you tomorrow. Have a good sleep. Thank it's a big you. day. Yeah. It's a big day. You need a better sleep than I do. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I've known Leah since she was about 16. For me, it's so proud that moment when I saw her walk out at Old Trafford and has led a team that had a fantastic captain for so many years before her. So to step into those shoes so effortlessly and do what she's doing, she's a real credit to this country to be leading that team. I see the captaincy as it's a role that somebody has to do and somebody has to wear the armband, but I think it's easy somebody identifying that potentially might be a, a leader in the future. But um, when it's, yeah, it's been, I've been in that position a few more times, I've realised that actually it's, it's about consistency. And if I, if other people view me as that, then there's an expectation on the way that I behave and the way that I act. Um, so just being genuine and being authentic to myself, I would never change. I'm never not seeking to be anybody else. But I think just being a bit more consistent with it and, and a bit more reliable.
into the Italy, starting at 11 in goal number one, Laura Giuliani, number two, Valentina Bergamaschi, captain number three, Sara Gamma, number four, Aurora Galli. La gente si aspetta che io pari e quindi io devo parare. Quindi queste sono le mie aspettative e credo siano poi in linea con quello che si aspetta anche la gente. Eh, io mi diverto quando vado in campo, cerco di essere me stessa sempre, di portare in campo le mie caratteristiche e per metterle al servizio della squadra. Eh, la pressione forse la pressione viene nel momento in cui ci sono tante qualità messe in campo, quindi mi ricordo una bellissima frase di Spider-Man no? che diceva da grandi poteri derivano grandi responsabilità ed effettivamente è un po' così. Eh, in tutti i grandi sport, in tutte le grandi competizioni eh, si sente la pressione del risultato. I media naturalmente ti danno visibilità, quindi un errore commesso davanti a una televisione, davanti a tanti spettatori, naturalmente ha più peso a livello psicologico rispetto a un errore fatto davanti a un pubblico di genitori, se così vogliamo dire. Sono Laura Giuliani, sono il portiere del Milan e della Nazionale. Da quando sono piccolina amavo giocare a palla prigioniera e io bloccavo tutti i palloni, Ero, mi piaceva rimanere per ultima perché, perché dovevo liberare gli altri, no? quindi dovevo bloccare la palla per forza per poterla lanciare dall'altra parte e far liberare i miei compagni. Quindi mi piaceva l'idea di essere l'ultimo baluardo della squadra e da lì, da lì poi quando mi hanno messa in porta, quando giocavo con i, con i miei compagni, hanno visto che effettivamente ero bravina, quindi da lì poi è andato avanti sempre così. I'm a 100% winner. I hate losing. I can be in a really bad mood. Even when we lose like small-sided games or like a little game during training, even beside football, I want to win everything. That made me the player I am today. I always want more and I always want to achieve more and I always want to be the best. And um, I think sometimes they put you down as a, a big ego or something because you just want to win. But that's always in the in interest of the team. And um, i think that's how you get the furthest, by wanting to win and wanting to improve and every small detail can count in a game and that's for some players. Details are not really important but for me it is playing uh, at the right speed, on the right foot. So yeah, sometimes as I said hard to accept but um, that's how I am and uh, I think that's brought me where I am today. I was dancing first. I was really bad at it. Um, I have no rhythm at all. I didn't like it either. And I was just playing in the, in the garden when um, friends of my parents came over. We played a bit and then later on, uh, apparently he told my dad, like, you have to let her play football because um, what she can do with a ball as a five-year-old is crazy. Um, I think she has a talent for it. And here we are, uh, 24 years later, never stopped. We welcome star striker and captain of our Adidas Federation Belgium, Tessa Bollard. So Tessa is Belgium women's all-time top goal scorer. She's still unexpected. Success in women's football is having people behind you that want to invest in, and believe in women's soccer. The game is growing and, and we still have a lot more sponsors coming up and, and saying like, hey, I want to invest in women's soccer and I want them to represent our brands and 
I think that's really important for us to, to grow. This wave is great, but I think it needs to be sustained. These amazing records that are being broken at the moment, they won't always stand as records. So I think sustainability and maintaining that interest and from a brand point of view, we are very much kind of dedicated to be on the journey with women's football as it grows. I'm Francesca Sullivan. Um, I am Adidas's global uh, lead for our female player portfolio. I'm very aware that these girls have had the determination. They've been acting as professionals without that professional stage and being able to, you know, show who they are and where they've come from and the fight that they have, I think, is really, really strong. Inizialmente per sviluppare qualsiasi cosa bisogna investire per poi vedere il ricavo no? in un futuro. Alla base di tutto credo, credo che poi ci siano, ci siano i risultati, quindi nel momento in cui si portano dei risultati c'è anche la volontà di investire perché si crea visibilità non solo a livello mediatico ma anche a livello eh, di fan, di supporto e di supporter. È tutto un movimento che viene creato nel momento in cui ci arriva il risultato sportivo. It is so important that we create role models and that we use the visibility we now finally receive. I think every, in the end everything stands and falls with this, stands and falls with having more prominence when it comes to our uh, players. And I think that's, that's the only way to go. That's how uh, the next generation will get inspired. And I think we also have really, really great personalities behind these players. We've got players that really stand up for more than just a great performance. They want to stand up for more than just what they do day in and day out on the pitch. And to see this responsibility uh, across players, their awareness that they know they have to kind of do a bit of more work to change the sport for the better also off the field of play is something really special and something we really need to, to use more. The opportunity needs to be there for more. You know, I was lucky I had a car and I had parents that could drive me to training, but if I didn't have that, would I have been able to get to training? Would I have had to stop? And I know that girls have dropped off because of that. So we need to have more more clubs, more opportunities and, and better pathways. You know, make the pool as diverse as possible in, in all, all forms. But for the professional game as well, I think that our standards, I'm required to do the same job and my body for my limits goes through the same as it does for my male counterpart. And I think that's the main thing. If you came into the game, that's what we're asking for. Nobody's asking for equal salary right now. They're asking for equal access to facilities, um, you know, medical provision, all of those different things that actually allow me to do my job. Because right now, the stress that I'm under and in terms of my body and for future, um, we're not looked after in the way that we should be. My story, how long have we got? <laughs> when I think back, I started playing football in a concrete football cage at the end of my council estate. Didn't even know about women's teams or women's football. I just wanted to keep playing in that football cage with my brother. But he persuaded me and I went down and Arsenal signed me when I was eight. Football took me around the world, gave me a lot of opportunities in my life that I never thought that I, I would ever have, being that young girl playing in the football cage. I had dreams, but those dreams for me, they, they came true. We've seen some of the most beautiful moments in, in all, all of time in football, you know, uh, in sport. So I think that having the representation and the drive for equality, I think that it could be a massive, massive influence on society. And I think as society changes, sport goes alongside that. And if we can push it on, um, we're ahead of the game in most things when it comes to 
to push in and I think it's because in sport we're exposed to all walks of life and you know in my team you'll have people come from everywhere all different financial situations uh, sexual orientation you know where they come from in the world and I think that that's the beauty of sport and why we're maybe so open to to pushing for change really and changing in in the forward direction so to speak so yeah if we can influence on society then I think that that's a massive bonus for us and I think it's something we're all aware of I feel really lucky to be part of this generation that I've still had the influence and played with the players that had it harder before me. So I know how fortunate I am, but I also didn't have it easy. The discouragement of a girl playing football when I was younger was major. You know, parents of the opposition team that weren't happy that you'd sort of beat their boy or, you know, as if it was, it was inappropriate or it was just out of, you know, against the norm. So I think, um, my mum had to pretend to be a boy to play football. I didn't. I had the luxury of, of being able to play, but there's definitely been hurdles, and I presume everybody, like I say, in this generation and this team would have would have had the same hurdles, and, and we've all got to where we are today because we loved it. So without that passion for the game, I'm not sure... Um, yeah, I think the pool of women's players would be smaller than it is today. There's certain words I think scare people. Diversity being one of them, it's now seen as this dirty word. As soon as you mention diversity, it can get people's backs up, when actually it's not, it's about opportunity. I think when you think about, uh, when you talk about sometimes as well, um, equality, it's not necessarily we're always talking about equality in being paid or money. It's about the way you're treated. <laughs> Where it really frustrates me when, for example, um, we only have one gym at the club, and when the when the when the, when the men's team is in it, we can't we can't go in there. So I think that should be equal, just um, using the same facilities and being treated equally, and not not being put on the level or of under 15 or under 16 boys. I think that's uh, really discrimination. And yeah, money is one thing, and it's important as well to to let football become your job and to um, get the most out of it. But, um, yeah, already using the same equipment and, and infrastructure as um, the men's team, that's, that's, that's the first step, I think. Scandinavians always been very known for having a great history in women's football. We want all the best players to be part of our national team. I find it really sad if these girls can't fulfill their potential. To see us more as football players rather than women playing football. I can't wait for the day when I don't have to talk about equality in every single interview.